So welcome to part two. In the end of uh, part one, I introduced what the characteristic equation is. So I, in this part, I wanna kind of spend a little bit of time working out some examples so you can see how, how this works and finding the characteristic equation. So here's my problem. I want to find the characteristic equation of this three by three matrix. So what I first need to do is take the matrix A and I need to subtract the uh, lambda times the identity matrix of size three from that matrix to make a new matrix. So let me do that. So I end up with one minus lambda, zero, minus one, two, three minus lambda, minus one, and zero, six, minus lambda. Now, because I'm interested in the characteristic equation, I need to find the determinant of this new matrix. So the determinant of this new matrix. I'm gonna use my three by three trick, right? So I'm gonna go down this diagonal. So I have one minus lambda, three minus lambda times negative lambda. Then I'm gonna do the second diagonal, but that would be zero minus one times zero. So that's zero. And then I would do my last diagonal, which would be minus one times two times six. So I would get minus 12 there. And then I wanna do the subtracting the antidiagonal. So in this direction, I would get a zero this direction I would get minus six times negative one times one minus lambda, and then I do the last diagonal. Okay, and there's my expression. And now what I need to do is I need to clean this all up. And I actually did this uh, before the lecture. So I get negative lambda cubed plus four lambda squared minus nine lambda minus six. And this guy right here, just by itself, is called the characteristic polynomial. So this is the characteristic polynomial. And when we set this guy equal to zero, then we call that the characteristic equation. So let's do that. So negative lambda three plus four lambda squared minus nine lambda minus six equals zero. So this is the characteristic characteristic equation because we set it equal to zero. Now the whole point is that we wanna know uh, when this thing is equal to zero. So for specific lambdas that we put in here, we may or may not get zero. But the whole point is that Lambda is an eigenvalue if and only if lambda is a solution to the characteristic equation. Okay, so this is kind of the, uh, the key point that we wanna bring across here, that we have that eigenvalues come from looking to the roots of this equation. But now you're gonna notice something that we're gonna run into over and over again, right, is to find the eigenvalues of our first matrix. So to find the eigenvalues of our matrix in our example, we need the roots of this equation. And so negative lambda cubed plus four lambda squared minus nine lambda, minus six equals zero. But the one downside is that it can be hard to find roots. In fact, lots and lots and lots of mathematics is devoted to this particular problem. How do you find roots of a polynomial? So this makes it actually a little tricky to find uh, eigenvalues in a, a for a matrix, especially if you're going beyond a two by two or a three by three matrix. But we know that they're there uh, and they're going to be the roots of the characteristic equation. So, and normally when we do linear algebra class, we cook up equations so that it's actually quite easy to figure out the roots of these uh, polynomials, okay? Now, let's look again at the triangular matrix. We, we actually did this in last class, right? We actually, we know that the eigenvalues, we know that the eigenvalues are simply the entries on the diagonal. So we on the, so we already saw that, but you can actually see this uh, via our new fact, okay? 
can also see this via the new approach. Okay, and let me quickly give, sketch out an example so you can see that. So here I have a four by four matrix and I set up the matrix A minus lambda I four. So I get four minus lambda, negative seven, zero, two, zero, three minus lambda, minus four, six, zero, zero, three minus lambda, negative eight, and zero, 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 and one minus lambda. And what we're interested in is knowing the determinant of this equation. But this is a triangular matrix, right? So we know that the determinant of a triangular matrix is simply the product of the diagonal entries, right? So the determinant of this matrix is given by this form right here. So this is the product of the diagonal entries. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit because I'm going to use this in a second. So notice that I have three minus lambda twice. So I'm writing just three minus lambda squared. And so what we get here is that the eigenvalues are lambda equals four, three, and one, which is exactly what we talked about last class, that the eigenvalues are the entries on the, on the diagonal entry, okay? Now, one thing you want to kind of pay attention to that in the above example, right, it really looks like you want to treat three as appearing twice, right? Because it's appearing uh, three, it appears twice on the diagonal. It appears twice on the diagonal. And we're seeing the twice part here and the fact that you're squaring three minus lambda. So the way that we are going to kind of capture that information is we're going to say that lambda equals three has multiplicity two since, oh, let me clean that up for you, since three minus lambda uh, appears twice in the factorization. So we're going to use this notion of uh, multiplicity in, in a future lecture. So we want to kind of capture the fact that sometimes an eigenvalue appears kind of the same eigenvalue appears multiple times. So that's what we're trying to get across with the notion of multiplicity. The other thing that you can notice is that because we're dealing with an n by n matrix, the characteristic polynomial is always going to be a polynomial of degree n. So if you know a little bit about um, the fundamental theorem of algebra, it says that any polynomial of degree n has at most n roots. So we know that um, we have to have, so at most uh, n possible eigenvalues, since at most n roots to the characteristic equation, right? And again, this is something we actually talked about in the last class. We explained that um, that a, a matrix can have at most n eigenvalues, and this is, gives us a different route at seeing that information. Okay, so we'll pause here. Uh, what the takeaway is, is so far the characteristic equation now gives us the, a way to capture the eigenvalues, but now how do you capture all the eigenvectors as well.